Sorry, and Sizemore, I figured we could have just a little bit of back and forth, taking turns answering questions. And then um, as Tracy feels the need to, to add on to anything, or if we want to tap into her to explain things in further detail, um, we can just reach, reach out to her to explain anything further. If that sounds, sounds good. good to me. All right, so I have a, a first question for you guys if you're ready to get rolling. Let's do this. All righty. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, the first question I have is um, a one that we get pretty commonly from students. So um, if students are looking at other ROTC programs um, across the U.S. or even the state, what makes Carol's ROTC program different? So I'll pop uh, into this uh, right away. I think, you know, the thing that uh, we like to tell people is that what draws people to Carroll, the, the smaller community, the teacher to student ratio being a lot smaller, are the th same things that draw people to our ROTC program. Um, we, get, we get a lot of time because of the fact that it's a smaller program to work one-on-one -on -one with each one of the students and really curtail the program to fit their direct needs, whether it's physically or educationally um, or even athletically based on what they're doing in school and what their goals are. The biggest, most important thing for us obviously is to make sure that you get that education and get uh, and graduate so that you can become an, an army officer, but we want you to be successful. We want you to be able to um, spend a lot of time focusing on what's important to you and then army um, fits in there right behind it. And I think, you know, when you go to, I myself went to a larger school and you have a much bigger program, um, a lot of things fall through the cracks at times. And we pride ourselves in just uh, having that ability to, and, and I think that uh, you see that in our program in the cadets as well, the juniors and seniors take the underclassmen under their wings as soon as they come in the door and they take a lot of pride in, uh, in bringing them, showing them the ropes, um, whether it's connecting them, networking them with the proper people around campus, around the community, and making sure that they're successful from right from the get go and feeling like they're part of the team. Um, it's a big thing that Carol prides itself on. Awesome. Courtney, did you have anything to add? Yeah, the only thing I would um, add is just the cadre. And so by cadre, we mean like your instructor. So myself and Captain Clark, both of us are live in Helena, Montana, and we're part of the Montana National Guard. And so what you'll see at other programs is you'll see a mix of teachers from all over and they're active duty, whereas Captain Clark and I live in the city and we have a lot of buy in. And so that's one thing that's a little bit different, too, is just the amount of care and consideration. Both of us chose the job, applied for it, got it. And so we really have a lot of buy in into the program which you might not see other places. Awesome, yeah. I, I did know what Captain Clark said about the welcoming atmosphere. I remember as a freshman, when other people were moving in, um, the upperclassmen ROTC students would personally come greet them at their doors, give them a welcome package and stuff. So um, that's really cool to hear you say that because I've seen that happen for sure. Um, we've got some questions in the chat. So let's go. Um, First with Ashton, so how does ROTC work with student athletes? I'll let you take that one. Start in size more if you want. Sounds good. So we work hand in hand with a lot of the coaches. We're all on a first name basis, double checking. We have currently right now three, four students that do uh, athletics as well as ROTC. So we have two football players and then two track and one of the track is also Kosh Country. And so we work closely with your professor. Your freshman year, we like you to make sure that you're ensuring that you're getting, um, filling into your academics and get, getting comfortable with your classes as well as getting comfortable with your team. And so we do a really good job of trying to accommodate and work around. Like two of our athletes can attend my class because it's the same time as our practice. And so we just do like an online version, meet with them once a week, ensure that they're getting all of the same information while still being able to participate. And so we do work hand in hand with that. We like having athletes in our OTC. It's just another aspect of our cadets that we appreciate. And so we work pretty closely with them. And as long as you can manage to balance your academic with your athletics and ROTC, that's kind of the biggest thing you'll see sometimes as you get higher up 
junior, senior year, some people choose to, to go with ROTC and academics and less athletics, but we do make accommodations for athletes. Awesome. So we had another good question about scholarships. Does ROTC offer scholarships? Um, you guys talk about what that looks like, okay, Carol, and maybe how it's even like UM or something. Like that. Oh, yeah. I think uh, that's a that's obviously a lot a lot of the reason that people look at uh, ROTC from the get go. There's uh, multiple avenues of scholarships that people can come in. Uh, the most common one that you hear of is the Lions Scholarship. That's the uh, one that people apply for their their senior year of their um, high school career. And they um, put in a packet, they put together everything that uh, will allow them to compete for a four-year scholarship once they come onto campus. Um, there's also something called a guaranteed reserve force duty for those people that know that they want to uh, go into the National Guard or reserves once they get through school. And there's obviously a lot of paths that if somebody knows that, that opens up a whole nother pool of money for them to tap into. But uh, I think now we, we have specifically have our uh, recruiting operations officer, Tracy Mitchell here. I think it'd be a good opportunity for her to talk about the current scholarships that are available, like for you to start working towards right now. Um, and I'll pass the, the buck over to her if she doesn't mind popping on and, and explaining that. Sure. So <clears throat> there's some great scholarship opportunities available for uh, current high school students and or current college students to apply for. Um, the great thing about ROTC scholarships is they're pretty risk free. Uh, even if you're offered a four year scholarship, you can participate your full freshman year without having any obligation to pay that back if you decide it's not a good fit. Um, so if you're a current High school senior, you would work directly with me on the scholarship application because the national window is closed for current seniors. If you're a current high school junior, the national scholarship application window will open up in June of this summer for you guys to start your applications. So again, if you're even thinking that ROTC might be something you're interested in, I would highly encourage you to uh, apply for the scholarship. It's primarily an online application with an interview that you have to do in person. Uh, but other than that, everything can be done online. Uh, and I'm happy to help out as you go through that process. Um, and so uh, again, if you receive the scholarship, uh, you can't beat the benefits at Carroll. Um, and so, Again, if you're thinking ROTC is something that you're interested in, that you want to check out, um, even if you're on scholarship freshman year and you decide you want to stay, that's great. If you decide it's uh, not a great fit for you, then you really just can leave the program and stay on at Carroll as just a student. So if anybody has other specific scholarship questions, uh, I'll make sure I put my email on uh, the chat and so people can follow up with uh, questions about scholarships. Oops, sorry, I got to unmute. Okay. Um, thank you. So we got another question. Um, Grace is wondering, how do you see your students balancing ROTC with their major? Um, specifically with anthrozoology is what they're asking about, but um, I think this is a good question. Like, if, if students have a rigorous major, um, what do you see that balance look like? And is it, is it possible to do that at Carroll? Yeah, I'll, t I'll uh, start answering this question. I'll, I'll uh, pop it over Science Sizemore for her to uh, have her see if she has any further input. But uh, I think we really, like I said at the beginning, we pride ourselves on uh, focusing on what your individual needs are. So we sit down at the beginning of each semester and then we sit down halfway through the semester to see, uh, ensure that your uh, classes are all going well and to really, you know, curtail any type of additional um, uh, school time off that you might need. If there's, you know, you come in and there's a, a OCHEM test, an organic chemistry test that you have that day, and it's uh, one of the mornings, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, that we're doing um, our physical fitness. We allow people to come in and they say, oh, we need to study for this test later today. 
um, you know, they can go off and sit off to the side in one of the chairs at the, the athletic center and study for that test because obviously getting a good grade on that test is a lot more important than them doing a few push-ups and sit-ups that morning. Um, and that's just one of the few examples of, of how we allow people um, the time and flexibility to focus on their grades. Um, like Sergeant Sizemore was saying too, the ability to come in and uh, watch those online recorded classes because somebody has conflicts with uh, another class or athletics or something, you know, we're, we're really flexible in how we allow people to, um, to meet the obligations of their specific degrees and, and their courses of study. Sergeant Sizemore, do you have any, anything else to add there? Yeah, so I'll just kind of walk you through what a day in the life of a cadet looks like. And so you can kind of start to understand a little bit of some of the requirements for ROTC. And so Captain Clark hit on, we do do physical training and that's from 6 to 7.20 on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then if you're an incoming freshman, you'll be taking my class, MSL 101, and that's on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 12.15 to 145. And so um, along with those two classes, we also have lab, which is more of an optional thing for freshmen, and that's on Wednesdays from 2 to 6, where we do a lot of our tactical training, go out into the field, and kind of get outdoors and work on some of the things that we talk about in the classroom. And so that's kind of the class requirements for ROTC. But we have three other anthrozoology students and they are balancing pretty well. Um, ROTC does take some additional time. And so that's, if you have some time management issues, we can always help work with that. But um, for the most part, they balance it pretty well and are successful in both ROTC and their anthrozoo program. But if it ever came between academics and ROTC, we always err on the side of you being successful in your academics. Hopefully that helps. Awesome. So um, we talked about obligations during school. What do obligations look like after school for um, the students that want to do ROTC? And sort of when does that commitment um, come into play? So unless you have further education, which, uh, you know, for doctors and special degrees can um, add additional time on after you get out of Carroll, the normal person coming out of ROTC uh, has the option between, uh, unless they have that guaranteed reserve force duty, it uh, it's really comes down to four years of active duty or eight, eight years in the reserves or National Guard. Um, and that's really for them to um, obviously, it's a big investment for you to go to school, and they're just trying to recoup that investment that they have provided you in their education and what, whatever that field of study that you got. Um, they want to bring those tools and put them to use in the military and get their, get their investment back for, on you. Um, I, in, in regards to uh, the other question and answer zoology specifically, I just thought it'd be funny to go back to that. Um, our junior that I currently have that's in that program, she brings in her dog into the ROTC house every now and then to, to say hi. We don't, we don't discourage her from doing that because we all love pets and, and see something different. Uh, it's pretty, pretty interesting and unique. Um, but I think that uh, another thing that's important to touch on that, that Tracy brought up, um, the, the people who get an ROTC scholarship uh, that, that come to Carroll, um, the specific thing, another thing that makes Carroll unique that is the fact that, uh, you know, not only do, when you start on a Carroll College scholarship, um, you start getting that 100% tuition, tuition paid for. You also, Carroll um, matches like 100% of the room and board that uh, they provide as well. And that's something that a lot of other schools don't have the ability to do. Uh, and Carroll is uh, really unique and special once you get that scholarship to be able to do that. On top of that, you get your $600 per month uh, or per semester for uh, books. I apologize, it's actually $425 a month, the stipend, once you have that, and uh, $600 a semester for books. So quite a bit of money, you're actually making money um, to come to school at Carroll once, you, once that scholarship kicks in, 420 bucks a month, all right, $5 off, almost. But uh, yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're getting paid to come to school once you, uh, you get into the ROTC program and start on that. Awesome, so <clears throat> I, 
I get that this question um, a little bit as an admission counselor, but if someone wants to um, look into ROTC, is it possible for them to like try it out and see if it's right for them and then sort of opt out? I know you talked about it a little bit, but um, could you talk about the process of what that looks like? Go ahead, Sergeant Sizemore. Um, sir, you're actually going to need to take that. We had an incident over here. All right. Sorry, we're working on like potty training a toddler. And... No worries. All right. Um, so that's uh, that's very simple. It's just like uh, signing up for any other class. Uh, and when you come into school, uh, your freshman and sophomore year, anybody can come in and, and take it as an elective. And they're allowed to um, choose whether or not they want to be part of the class, whether they want to do the physical fitness or do the lab. You can do all three. You can do one. Um, really, the biggest thing is to come in and uh, see, you know, if the atmosphere, if the tempo really fits in with the rest of your, um, your class load and, and what you want to do and meet your goals and, uh, and go from there. It's, and that's up to the end of your sophomore year before you really have to make that commitment. So you could take four semesters of ROTC uh, without making any type of commitments to, to anything or, or signing up for any type of scholarships. Um, the really the biggest thing to, to focus on there is once you, you know, sign that line, you start receiving um, that scholarship money um, and you're contracted as a cadet, that's what really locks you into uh, to continuing in on the program. Awesome. We got another good question in the chat. So if you're, if you were to continue ROTC into medical school or dental school, how long would you have to be in the army? Um, or how does that work to continue on, on that track? I saw Tracy reaching to unmute it there because we actually just had a conversation with another uh, cadet in regards to this. Um, it, uh, go ahead, Tracy. So how that works is you would do ROTC for your undergraduate education. And during your junior year of college, you would start working with the Army Medical Department recruiters or what's referred to as the AMED recruiters on an application called the Health Profession Scholarship Program application. And so the Health Profession Scholarship Program is the Army's program to pay for medical or dental school, whichever one you're pursuing. Um, and you'd be taking the MCAT, the pre-entrance exam, to medical or dental school at that time also. And so you're still in ROTC up through the end of your undergraduate, but the end of your junior and beginning of your senior year, you're working on uh, applying for that Health profession Scholarship Program application. Uh, so if you receive that, and Carroll College grads have great, um, a great history for ROTC cadets. Uh, I've been here 10 years and everyone who's applied has received it, but it's not guaranteed. It takes a lot of hard work. Uh, but uh, if you receive the Health Professions Scholarship, then the Army pays for your medical school or dental school. Um, I'll just kind of give an example of medical school and dental would be similar. So. Typically, medical school is three to four years, uh, typically four. And so you would owe four years of time of service for ROTC. And then you would owe one year for every year of med school that the Army paid for. So if you did three years of med school, you would owe an additional three years. If you did four years of med school, you would owe an additional four years. So after you finish med school, you will do a residency as a doctor. Um, and so during your residency time, you're paid as an army captain uh, and you're not paying back your time though. So you're receiving money, you're doing your residency, you're getting army pay for that, but you start paying back your time of service, your um, active duty service obligation time it's called after you are a fully licensed doctor. So after your residency, you would start paying back your time. So seven to eight years uh, as an army doctor, but again, that's without any debt because the army's now paid for your undergrad and med school. So eight years as a doctor, and then you could leave 
active duty and just go pursue a civilian career, you could leave active duty and go into the guard or reserve as a doctor and become a civilian doctor and have both those to kind of supplement income. But eight years really is kind of the, the standard for post-med school. Awesome. I always say if I could go back to college, I would definitely do ROTC. These are things I wish I would have known. Um, do any of you have more questions? Um, you can just throw them in the chat. Um, I don't want to change the topic with a different question unless you guys have more questions um, that are more related to that. Jamie, I think uh, we hear that a lot, though, coming from um, people that interact with us, admissions counselors and stuff, being able to come out of college in the black, you know, and be able to not have that huge amount of debt makes such a big difference, especially when you're looking at the cost of medical school and that time um, at the end, you know, you're a 17, 18 year old, eight years sounds like a lifetime. Um, but when you're, you're dedicated to um, that profession and that's something that you know that you want to do, um, going through there and having that you're getting paid, you know, so you're making a lot of money and not only are you coming out of it, not in debt, you're actually coming out of it quite a bit ahead because through that entire time you're getting, you're getting all that, all that money from, um, um being there and, and going through that, the stipends and stuff in regards to the health profession. No, I agree. Um, I do have a question that a lot of students ask is if they apply for an ROTC scholarship at Carroll and don't get it, what does that look like? What happens with them? Do they reapply the next year um, or do they just pay for college like normal? So if they, there's, uh, there's options that allow them to um, look at applying through other avenues. Um, like I said, there's a couple different paths that you can take uh, when you're applying for scholarships for ROTC. But uh, definitely, you know, it's, if somebody misses a deadline and they were hoping to, they just wanted to go like, I want to go active duty. I know that's what I want to do. Um, they can definitely apply um, up to the end of their sophomore year. So anybody coming in, there's a lot, then that's a lot big misconception that a lot of people have is that uh, they have to do it like within, before they start their freshman year or they have to do it their freshman year. Uh, as long as ROTC has two years with you, um, you can go to basic camp, which is kind of a, a, a really fast training of just getting the basics of what it means to be in the army between your first sophomore and junior year. And then you can uh, just have those four semesters, your junior and senior year of our OTC, get them fully paid for and, um, and go from there on, on a campus scholarship. Tracy, do you want to, uh, do you want to add a little bit more detail about what the, what that might look like if they get, turned down from receiving a scholarship right now though before they come into their freshman year? Yeah, sure. So you really have a couple of great opportunities uh, before you even get on campus to earn the scholarship. Again, um, for juniors, your best bet is to apply for the National Army ROTC scholarship. Um, if you're a current senior and you did apply and didn't receive one, uh, or didn't apply, you would work directly through me to try to apply for what's a campus scholarship. And so there still is an opportunity uh, for current seniors, up and coming freshmen uh, to earn a scholarship. Um, there are opportunities like Captain Clark said, all the way up until your junior year, as long as you have two years left of college, you can continue to apply for an ROTC scholarship every year. Uh, we do have great success of getting um, people who are academically successful and committed to the program uh, scholarships. Uh, so although ROTC scholarships are competitive, if you get here, if you aren't offered a national scholarship, so before you get here, if you get here and you do well academically and you don't have to have a 4.0, but a 3.0 or above, and you are physically fit or can get physically fit with our assistance because we have great mentorship program as far as physical fitness. Uh, so if you can be successful academically and we can get you physically fit, uh, you do have great opportunity and we have a great success rate of getting scholarships for, uh, for 
prospects and for people who are interested in the program. So um, what I would say is if, if ROTC and military is something that you want to do, um, just let us know and we're here to help you guys be successful and that's to include getting you education benefits to cover college. Awesome, thank you. Um, just to give them a picture of what it's, it's like at Carroll, I know we went through like what a day looks like, but how many students do you have um, in the ROTC program at Carroll? Um, and I don't know if you know how many of those students are on scholarship or what that looks like, but um, what's, the, what's the culture of the program look like as far as attendance? Sergeant Sizemore, you wanna take that one? Sure. So we have about 29 total students participating in ROTC, which is probably one of the highest numbers we've had in a while. We have 12 currently in our freshman class. Our sophomore class is about five, and then it's eight and five um, going up junior and senior. And we're looking to have a pretty good size, probably around 12 for our incoming freshman class as well. And so a majority of them, I would say we have... Out of the 12 freshmen, we have nine of them that have scholarships that are either have started four year or will start next year. And then the other three are competing for scholarships currently. And so, I mean, the odds there are pretty good. A majority of those were the National Line scholarships and they were awarded prior to coming to ROTC at Carroll. So that's kind of the statistics. There, our sophomore class, we have five and they're all on scholarship as well as our junior and seniors are all on scholarship. And the five sophomores, we have two that went National Guard, and the other three are all line scholarships that applied out of high school. So odds of scholarships, pretty good, um, as we see right now, if that helps at all. Yeah, so it's like great odds. Um, what does it look like when they compete for the scholarships then um, for those remaining freshmen? Is it physical fitness tests, academic standing, or a combination of all of them? It's a little bit of a combination of all of them. What a lot of it comes down to is uh, their participation in the program, you know, how their GPA looks, uh, whether or not they're physically fit. And then um, obviously like Tracy was speaking to the, uh, the pot of money that she has, um, it's given to her that allows her to um, facilitate giving those scholarships out to people who are on campus because, you know, when it starts out, she has a certain amount of money for scholarships that she can allot to different people. But then further in, if we're fighting for them, if somebody is dedicated and they need to figure out how to get a scholarship, she has, she has a, a couple of different avenues that she can reach into to, um, to pull that scholarship money in. Awesome. Um, another common question I get. So a lot of the students that I know that I work with, um, they're looking at what happens after graduation. Um, so a lot of them, that's the reason they choose Carroll is because of what, what that sort of projects for after their time and their undergrad. So what are some career options that people um, either commonly go into with ROTC um, or can go into? I mean, do they, do they stick to their field and work a job in their field um, while still committing to the Army or what does that look like? I think that uh, you'll see that's that's a little bit almost half and half. We have a lot of people who come to Carroll College and they get an engineering degree and they want to go be an army engineer or somebody who comes uh, and wants to be a doctor and they get into the medical services field or uh, something along those lines. And then you have on the other side of things, somebody who knows that they want to be a, a physical therapist or um, a nurse outside of the military. And then they know that on the, when they do like the National Guard service, one week in a month, two weeks in the summer, they want to go fly helicopters. So they'll be an aviation officer or, um, or logistics or infantry, whatever it might be. Um, so really, you know, even though that uh, the scholarships and the ROTC path allows you to hone in and uh, build your resume based on the degree that you're getting to match up with your career in the Army, you also have the option for it to be kind of an escape to, to do something different on your military side. So it's a little bit of, uh, of both.
Awesome. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out my chat feature here. Okay, so I'll send it in the chat, but I'll also say it. So does anyone have final questions for our team that we have here? Um, it's pretty awesome that you have three representatives of ROTC with you here. So um, if you have any final questions, just let us know, throw it in the, in the chat there. And if not, I have a, a good final question for you. Ah, good question. Opportunities to go abroad with ROTC. I can take that if you want me to, Captain yeah. Clark. Okay. Uh, so you do have an opportunity to study abroad uh, while you're in ROTC. Um, we typically recommend doing it uh, during your sophomore year. Uh, I think a lot of abroad programs go sophomore or junior. Uh, junior year in ROTC is pretty critical that you are um, here at, you know, at the program um, because it's your most hands-on um, year as far as uh, being put into leadership positions and getting a lot of uh, mentorship on your leadership. So you can study abroad your sophomore year. Um, and so it's, it is paid for. Um, it really depends. So we had a cadet study abroad uh, this spring, unfortunately, she had to come back, which is very unfortunate for her. She went to Norway. Um, <clears throat> but ROTC will essentially pay for uh, the cost of the tuition um, to study abroad, just like they would pay for your tuition here. Um, the one thing I would say is uh, you would have to take room and board into consideration because Carol um, offers the room and board uh, because they're such great supporters of our program. And so if you went abroad, you would have to consider things like the cost of your room and board and things like that. But ROTC would cover the cost of your tuition. Awesome, okay, so final question. We got a few more minutes. Um, we got one more question that just popped up. Uh, what do labs look like in the program? I don't know who yeah. well, can talk so, about that. Um, so the labs are really, and I'll go down from the seniors to the freshmen. The, the seniors being the people who are just about ready to commission as junior officers in the Army are putting a lot of effort into planning those labs um, in, you know, they're working with hand in hand with uh, myself and Sergeant Sizemore. But they plan and they'll actually teach and they'll walk through uh, those labs when we go out on a Wednesday, um, we try to get out into the, uh, the forest around Helena as much as possible. Sometimes we do a little bit of class time before we go outside to actually go through movements and tactics. But they will come in and they will facilitate the teaching of those classes as the seniors. Um, and they will, in a lot of ways, run the program um, with the cadre, myself and Sergeant Sizemore being more of um, just mentors and uh, helping to make sure that staying, things stay on path. The juniors, um, in a lot of ways, are the, uh, the hands-on uh, squad and platoon leader. They're really being mentored and, and guided and taught those basics by the seniors so that they can go and be successful at the uh, advanced camp that is a normal evaluation that they go to for about 30 to 35 days between their junior and senior year to get evaluated on all those tactics and army basics that they learned from their freshman to, to junior year. And uh, the sophomore and freshmen are really um, seen as the, uh, the people that are there to learn. Um, they're kind of taking all of their directions from the juniors, the MS3s that are getting evaluated on those tactics. And um, everybody really comes together to just, it's more instead of focusing on here's your, what you're doing as a freshman, here's what you're doing as a sophomore, here's what you're doing as a junior, and so on. This is everybody coming together and taking their uh, learned skills, their education that they've gone up to that point and putting them to use, whether it's in, you know, us going outside and walking around the field at campus, or we're going to go up and um, do a simulated uh, attack on a 
or an am enemy ambush or something up on you know a trail out in the out in the forest at Sweeney Creek or Scratch Gravel Hills out north of not north of campus. Um, but it's a four-hour block, and for those things that we take off campus, we all uh, get into our 15-person van, drive out there. Um, we usually have a little bit of here's what we're going to do. The juniors will walk you through the plan. They'll get evaluated on how good they do at giving that plan. And then we'll go out and the seniors will a lot of time will act as, as the opposing force and they'll do a simulated enemy that allows the juniors to get evaluated on how they react to different, um, different things coming at them. So I hope that that, uh, that, that answered kind of a, what lab might look like. Yeah, I think it did. That's awesome. Um, a final question for everyone tuning in. I think um, a good thing for them to know right now is what can they be doing right now or maybe this summer leading up to if they were to join ROTC at Carroll in the fall? So obviously right now, um, finishing up strong GPA being one of the biggest factors that uh, makes you competitive for a scholarship and also makes you uh, competitive once you get into school um, to make to, to, to trying to get a scholarship um, it's a huge factor so to keep the grades up uh, the other thing is just getting into the basics fitness physical fitness whether it's something that you uh, comes natural to you as an athlete or something that uh, you know that you need to work on you know to, to run to be able to do those push-ups sit-ups um, and then us going transitioning into that new Army combat fitness test over the next uh, year or two here, um, being six events. Uh, I think just getting in and generally getting your body and muscles used to um, doing different actions uh, is, is a huge part of, um, of what you need to do to set yourself up for success coming into um, ROTC. Tracy, do you have anything else to, to add there to what they might be able to look into to, to prep themselves? No, I think um, just staying fit and enjoying your summer before you uh, come to college. Um, you know, there's, there's not uh, a ton you need to do to prep. You don't need to like dig into army ranks or regulations or anything like that. We'll, uh, we'll teach you all that stuff when you get here. So um, really just focusing on um, staying fit mentally and health, mentally and physically and uh, just being ready to be a successful college student really is, is all you can do. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining. Um, I learned a lot during this, so I hope this was helpful for all of you at home. Um, do you guys have anything else to add um, as a closing remark or anything um, to our students that are signing in? Yeah, I think if you guys don't mind and you'd like more information, if you could just add your email in the chat there and we can kind of give you a summary of what we talked about because it's a lot of information to come across, especially a Zoom meeting. And then you guys will have our information as well. And you can ask over the summer if you have any questions. You can, all of us work all the time. And so if you have questions, you can always just email us and we can kind of give you a synopsis of what we talked about.